So how do we write good actions? Well, in my experience, there's really three pitfalls to writing a good action. I'm gonna share what these pitfalls are, what traps lie at the, at the bottom of them, and how you can avoid them. So the first pitfall, and this one's reusing actions. And so I think the need to reuse actions comes out because we tend to view actions like commands. So how can we avoid this? Well, actions should really try to capture events and not commands. Instead of reusing actions or capturing commands in your actions, try to actually model your actions as unique events in your system. So really, you wanna make reducers and effects the decision makers in your application. This really boils down to separating the description of, of an event and the way it gets handled in your app. You don't want your components to decide how state changes. That's the kind of mess we're trying to avoid when we adopt NGRX. The second pitfall is using generic action types. And it turns out this one is pretty related to the first pitfall. If you're avoiding action reuse and you're capturing unique events, you're probably already avoiding generic action types. But I still think it's worth discussing. When you're picking an action type, you've seen this pattern a lot where we put in square brackets the source of an action and then we give a name to the event that arose from it. Try to pick really descriptive names from your sources. If it's an interaction with a backend API, suffix that source name with API. If it's from a component or a page, suffix it with component or page. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Good actions are actions you can read after a year and tell where they're being dispatched from. The third pitfall is action subtyping. What is action subtyping? Well, I really see developers fall into this pit when they wanna try and maybe handle click events for multiple options or if they wanna handle API responses and errors in a generic way. So where's the pitfall? Well, the reason this is problematic is it starts to introduce conditional branches all throughout your application. And these nested conditionals are gonna really start to add up when you go to write unit tests for this application. Similarly, in an effect, we have to add additional filtering to our effect, and this is another kind of nested conditional. We're percolating these nested conditionals throughout this application. So what we wanna do is we wanna constrain action types to be what I call narrow. Avoid putting yourself in a situation where you have to specify the kind or subtype or class of an action. Just leverage action type to describe the event. These are gonna cause you to write more actions, that's guaranteed, and I know Indrex has a boilerplate problem, but it's worth doing. You're gonna save yourself more time down the road by avoiding these nested conditionals that are gonna appear in your application. What is good action hygiene? Well, it's not reusing actions. This is gonna help make it clear what inputs to reducers and effects really are. It's gonna make those reducers and effects easier to read in a year's time. It's using descriptive action types. This is gonna help you improve debuggability and traceability in your NGRX application. You're gonna be able to look at your NGRX action log and know where an action is coming from. It's about avoiding action subtyping. This is gonna keep unnecessary complexity out of your reducers and effects and make your tests easier to write. It's about focusing on clarity over brevity. You're gonna always try to lean towards explicit code over code that was fast to write. It's about empathy. I can't stress how important this one is. Try to anticipate how other developers on your team are gonna help you build this application. And finally, it's about writing actions first. This is gonna help you avoid these pitfalls and develop a deep understanding of the feature.